This is NDTV. And you're watching NDTV Hindu. Welcome to Headlines now with me, Ashmit. Water as dark as those of sewers, food a touch better than leftovers and congestion, something that would give new meaning to the idiom packed like sardines. Now, these conditions are not those of jail cells or of refugee camps, but of hostels meant for students from backward classes. So perhaps you could consider forgiving them for expressing their outrage on Mount Road this morning. And while the police forces watch over their hostel as we speak, the false assurances of the backward classes ministry stand exposed. Our reporter Krishna Murthy will be joining us shortly to tell us more about the plight of this group of students which we brought to light three months back and are doing so again tonight. And of course, there's also the tale of those dreaded onion tears. We'll come to that in just a while. A very good evening to you once again. Let's take a look at other stories making headlines. Officials wake up after NDTV Hindus expose after reports of expired products being sold through the PDS, a series of raids and one suspension. Student fury takes a toll on traffic protests by student brings Mount Road to a halt. But situation is now under control. Onion prices bring back the tears for households. Meanwhile, Union Agriculture Minister says that relief is at least three weeks away. The situation tense in Trichopuram after four children are killed in a bus accident in Kadalor. The bus is being held by the public. I already booked some works for my personal reasons and I asked the CBI chief, the, the, the headquarters chief, the headquarters Delhi, that some other date may be assigned. After intelligence inputs, the state police is gearing up ahead of the Rahul Gandhi visit. Cops tighten security measures in the city. We certainly are conscious of this threat and the alerts that have been sent and we will be giving uh, adequate protection for him. Active Vijay looks for a change of luck with the latest release Kabbalan. Will the audience give us a thumbs up to the security guard? Let's also have a look at developments from across the country. Testimony of a key witness who said top Haryana cop SPS Rathor tortured Ruchika's brother is ignored. And ETV learns that agency backs, he didn't back it up. The telecom minister dials the telecom Zaz, Kapil Sibyl meets Ratan Tata, Sunil Mittal and Anil Ambani to calm nerves. As investigations continue, the CBI questions Neera Radia if evidence mounts, she could face action under the Corruption Act. India and Russia signed 30 agreements including the initial outlay for a deal worth $30 billion for a stealth fighter. After Chandra Babu Naidu, Jagan Mohan Reddy begins a 48-hour hunger strike. Local Congress dissidents support his campaign. Now, first up, NDTV Hindu exposed the grim realities underneath the fancy makeover that dingy ration shops have just undergone. But as we exposed, the changes were only cosmetic in nature, with substandard expired products being sold in the PDS shops. Our senior correspondent Peer Mohammed brought the sad state of affairs to light and since we aired the story, the state machinery seems to have been a set in motion with raids being conducted and one official being suspended. Let's take a look at the story that made this impact. On December 9th, Prem's mother was forced to buy this packet of grocery items when she went to the Lakshmipuram PDA shop to buy her quota of 20 kilo rice. As she unpacked the 25 rupees packet containing 10 provision items next day, three of them, cumin, Bengal gram dal and black gram dal were found to be expired. She was shocked that expired food products were forcibly sold to her. Only last month, the civil supplies department acted on six salesperson in North Chennai for selling expired atta. And this month, it is the turn of other provisions. And again, in the same locality. Does anyone care for the health of the citizen who trusts ration shops? But civil supplies commissioner promises action. Kalavadi and Purukala, 
நியாயவிலைக் கடையில் விற்கக்கூடாது என்று அரசு உத்தரவிட்டு இருந்தது இதன் அடிப்படையில் நவம்பர் ஒன்று மற்றும் இரண்டு ஆகிய தேதிகளில் மாநிலம் முழுவதும் உள்ள நியாயவிலைக் கடைகளை தணிக்கை செய்து காலாவதியான பொருட்கள் நியாயவிலைக் கடையில் இருப்பு இருக்குமானால் அதனை உடனடியாக அப்புறப்படுத்த வேண்டும் என்று மாவட்ட ஆட்சித் தலைவர்கள் கேட்டுக்கொள்ளப்பட்டிருக்கிறார்கள் The sale of grocery items in ration shops were meant to help people combat price rise. But the sale of such essential items well beyond the expiry date inside the city and outside will defeat the very purpose of affordable food items and impact on the health of PDS patrons. In Chennai with reporter Peer Mohammed, Lok Priya, NDTV Hindu. Well, again, our senior correspondent, Peer Mohammed, brought to, uh, brought to light this, again, very disturbing trend. And he's joining us live right now from the newsroom. A very good evening to you, Peer. Again, uh, taking this forward, coming in from the, again, what, has the, what have the officials told you about, again, this is one very disturbing trend, one that could severely impact the health of citizens here who actually rely on the PDS system. What have they said about steps being taken to ensure that this, uh, this act, uh, this, uh, this trend, really does not repeat itself? Uh, yes, uh, the Civil Supplies Commissioner Ka Balachandran, as he pointed out in the interview that, uh, that was given to us, uh, the, there have been steps taken since November this year, uh, uh, particularly after the, that step was taken, about uh, six people, salespersons and one supervisor was arrested in North Chennai area for uh, selling expired food products from PDS shops. And now that after our story was aired this morning, in fact, uh, one uh, salesperson from that Lakshmiburam PDS shop in Minjur area, he was uh, placed under suspension by the civil supplies department for selling that expired food product, particularly the packet of condiments which we aired uh, this morning. And uh, he has said uh, also raids were conducted across North Chennai since yesterday night because yesterday we met the commissioner and the commissioner has taken over his office uh, just two months ago and he has been quite vigilant on this issue. But uh, there are elements in the PD across, he admitted to the fact that there are elements in the PDA system. They try to uh, make more money, uh, that is why they keep these old stocks and uh, right. you know, make money for themselves. Yeah. Right, Peter. There you have it again, an official admitting for the fact that there is a big fault with the system there. But again, talking about the efficacy of the system here, how good are the measures that which they employ? You spoke of uh, the officials speaking of raids being conducted, officials being suspended. But really, how effective is it when actually the, the system continues and uh, it continues to actually service this kind of products, expired products to customers? Uh, yes, uh, the, uh, the efficacy of steps uh, taken by the civil supplies department, uh, we have to see if more uh, cases resurface. Now, as media keep track of such developments like us, keep track of such developments, we have to wait and see because it is one of the most popular schemes, particularly the condiments, uh, at times when price rises uh, affect people so much. This particular step by the DMK regime is uh, uh, quite popular. In fact, I I inside the city, people are uh, asking for the condiments, but they are not getting it. We uh, checked out many ration shops in the city where you know, there is shortage of these products, but outside the city, expired products are being sold. Uh, but we have to wait and see how effective these uh, steps are going to be in the coming months. If we are not finding such expired products, we can see the steps taken by the government is working. Right, Peter. Thanks a lot for joining us with all that insight and all that information, of course, uh, giving us the official perspective there. Well, moving forward, there was a heavy congestion on Mount Road this morning as the students belonging to scheduled castes and scheduled tribe hostels had taken to the streets. Now, with Mount Road being jammed, other areas like Nandanam, Kotrupuram and adjoining roads were also jammed and traffic was seen crawling. Now, police forces responded to the protests and helped defuse the situation. Now, the protest is over and traffic has been cleared with vehicles moving freely now. Meanwhile, the police is maintaining a heavy presence near the Sadapet hostel and has deployed extra forces to preempt any untoward incidents. Now, staying with that story, what does it feel like to choke uh, each and every day of your life? Well, that's the plight of students hailing from backward communities whose life is nothing but a living hellhole. NDTV Hindu had showcased the story of pathetic conditions of an RD Dravidian hostel in the city in September. And the backward classes ministry made the right noises, but now, three months on, our reporter Krishnamurthy finds out that the ground realities remain unchanged.
same story. Dark, dingy rooms and indifferent food are what hundreds of Adi Dravida students get year after year. Look at this Adi Dravida hostel in Mailapur. There are seven rooms. Guess how many room together? 110. Yes, 110 students are squeezed into this cramped space. Hygiene and other considerations? Well, who cares? That was just one of the 22 Adi Dravira hostels in the city. The infrastructure in rest of the hostels is as deplorable as this one. In September, KKSSR Ramachandran, the then backward classes minister, had asked for a factual report following NDTV Hindu expose. There appears to have been no follow-up. A stinking kitchen with water dripping from the ceiling, which is really the floor of the toilet, one floor above, is one of the many miseries to be endured. <laughs> And rightly so, this hostel in Saidapet houses around 1000 students when there is place for only 400. Food is served in buckets every day. Yes, buckets and garbage is dumped in the same place where students take a shower and wash their clothes. Human rights activists claim that even prisoners in jail enjoy better facilities compared to these hostels. They want the government to improve the infrastructure as soon as possible as all the inmates hail from a backward community and they do deserve a better treatment. In Chennai, this is Krishnamurti for NDTV Hindu. It's a very disturbing uh, developments being brought to light there. And for more than that, let's go across to our reporter, Krishna Murthy, who's again uh, joining us live from the newsroom. Now, Krishna, taking this forward, if we can talk about again, if you can give us uh, more clarity again. You, you, the visuals there spoke a thousand words, if I can use that phrase, about I mean, the situation that they have to contend with on a daily basis. Can you tell us a little, a little more about the situation which they face on a daily basis and why exactly is that uh, they are meant to make do with this uh, little options, few options that they actually have? Ashmit, all these students hail from backward community. Now, as you saw in the story, we were at the absolutely deplorable conditions over there. Now, uh, 15 people share a room where, which is meant for only four people. Food is being served in buckets and uh, people taking shower in a place where uh, uh, garbage is being done. So, absolutely deplorable conditions. So, that's why students are demanding a respite from this uh, uh, condition which they go through uh, every day which actually some of the students mentioned that this is like a living hell and even uh, uh, some of them mentioned that uh, living in a prison is probably uh, you know uh, where there are better facilities being provided so all these students ask for is basic remedy to uh, and access to basic infrastructure ashwit Right, again, asking for remedial action again. Thanks a lot, Krishna, for joining us again. But the sad state of affairs is that despite the fact that uh, these, this important critical question was ra raised uh, three months back uh, here on NDTV Hindu, little or none, uh, nothing has been done by the backward, home, backward caste ministry. So that's, uh, again, the update coming in. Now, moving forward with an almost unprecedented spike in prices of uh, onions, the government has been almost uh, forced to swing into action. The government has issued directives for suspending onion exports it has also called for an emergency meeting on the 15th of January. Now, Agricultural Cooperative Major Nafed, a regulating agency, has been asked to stop giving fresh clearance to exporters. Now, sources say that Nafed has been asked to sell onions at half the price only in Delhi. Now, this has been the steepest rise in prices over a long time, with a kilo of onion costing anywhere between 50 to 100 rupees. Now, farmers have singled out the weather gods as culprits. They argue that unseasonal rainfall in onion producing areas damage the crops and hence limiting the output. Uh, just to give you an idea about how the onion prices are doing, there's Patna again at 48 kilograms. Bhuvaneshwar, you can get onions for 46 to 50. Kolkata, meanwhile, again a heavy price tag of 50 rupees. But the southern states have taken the worst impact here. Uh, Trivandrum, again, you have to dish out 65 rupees for every kilo of onion. In Bangalore, you'll have to dish out 80. And Chennai seems to be the worst hit where people have to pay, households have to pay 100 rupees for every kilo of onions. On another national development, Ruchika Girotra case takes an unexpected turn. Investigating agencies throw up a surprise. Learn more about that in just a short while.